Um, I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time out. I know everyone is busy and that this is a long meeting. Recently, there have been, well, there has been a pattern of uh, abuse and brutality that this committee has been investigating for at least four to five years that I have been the head of it. Uh, we have come to our representatives, they have heard us, and Michael Kellner did put forth his original request and legislation for the State Community Review Board, which he put out back in 2010 after hearing our concerns about a variety of incidences that had happened from public safety officers abusing um, residents during arrests or arresting people really unconstitutionally. Uh, and I'm really grateful to hear that he has again, I think hearing concerns of the residents, he has reissued it and he has resubmitted it as of January 9th, which is very important. I also want to remind you that in 2008, Roosevelt Island voted, everyone on Roosevelt Island voted with concern that we expected and wanted to have a review board because there were issues with public safety, abusing the residents, false arrests, etc., that were questionable back in 2008. And the vote was 1,038 to 67. It was a referendum that was done and everyone on this island voted and it passed with a majority. And that was the beginning. So what I'm trying to let you see and what the people will be telling you today when they tell their stories is that this has been a long-standing pattern of abuse for the last five years. This isn't one instance. There's this in two instances. I have personally investigated with Ellen by my side, with Lynn Shinasaki, with Mincha, with Gera, trying to find out, trying to talk to him, trying to find a better solution for the way that public safety deals with our, our residents, for better communications, for an improved system so that our children, our residents, you, are not abused during the arrest process. So tonight we have a few people. Uh, recently, unfortunately, I don't know if everyone has heard, Anthony Jones was, in the, was hospitalized for seven days, handcuffed to a bed for five for trespassing. He suffered a broken rib, a punctured lung, um, and presently he has a law case, so we don't expect Ron to say too much. But it's outrageous, and he was, no charges, ended up being filed. So for five days, his, mo his mother will tell you she wasn't able to see, see him. He was handcuffed to a bed, and he's still damaged. Um, this is a concern. Last in October, we had Neil Stuber came up and spoke to us. He told us about his instance. We passed a resolution to ask REOC to investigate it. We sent a letter. They've ignored it. Nobody has investigated anything or kept us in the loop. So how long do we wait? So today I'm really grateful that uh, people are coming forward. We have a blog now which people are going to be able to give their stories on so that you guys can see if it doesn't touch your life or it hasn't touched your life yet, it may. It may be when you're walking down the street, it may be your child skateboarding when public safety comes up and tells them they can't do it and they say why not and they decide to put them in jail for it because things that silly have happened. Um, who would, do you have a list of who is going to go first? Okay, Jenna, I think you all remember, do you want to come and speak for three minutes? I remember Neil Stuber had been arrested and public safety had thrown him to the floor. Uh, he ended up being terminated. Jenna was the one who had the traffic stop. Do you want to speak briefly? Hello, um, my name is Jenna. Um, this past July, this summer, I was driving northbound down Main Street after dropping my mother off. Um, I had went around the red minibus in front of the church here, adjacent from the church. Um, the officer came into the middle of the street and told me that on Roosevelt Island, we do not pass the red minibus. I have lived here for 22 years, and I can tell you, and I'm sure there's other residents who can tell you, that many people pass the red minibus. This information is not attainable anywhere. You cannot find information telling you that you cannot pass the red minibus. Mm. It's not a New York City rule either. For them, and 
to say something and they give no reasoning behind it. That's our issue here. It's not, no one's saying that, you know, everybody's perfect and that they did the right thing to be approached. No, I was, I could not find the car's insurance in the car. Is that my responsibility as a driver to know where it is? Yes. But my father came down to give the car's insurance when going to hand it to the officer. She cursed at him and told him, do not come into the office with that bullshit. I'm sorry. They were then told to arrest my father for answering back, for giving a reason. My father weighs all of 140 pounds and was grabbed and lifted into the air by four officers. To me, that's not acceptable. For us to walk in fear to, for some of the public safety officers is ridiculous. For you to be worried if your child's walking down the street and you have a younger child that they might do something and that your child's gonna be thrown to the floor and locked up. The cameras don't work on Roosevelt Island. Conveniently, none of the surveillance cameras work. Is that not a bigger issue that surveillance cameras that should be watching over for the safety of public safety and for the residents that they're not working? It doesn't make any sense to me. And as a community, I think we all need to stick together. It's not just one person. And I know there's many other people with stories, but we all need to stick together and something does have to be done. And it's nice to know that some people are trying to help and that other people that don't have incidents are still supporting one another. And I don't want to go any further with the story, but that's the main point behind it, that we all need to support each other. Roseville Island is a small community. And that's it. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mimi, would you like to, to speak now? Um, as a mother of fact, my daughter is here. Okay. If she can talk to my son, <laughs> what happens? <laughs> okay, three minutes. I'm yeah. supposed to just go over what happened? Yeah. Okay. It happened about two years ago. About two years ago, um, I, was, I was driving down Main Street. Speak a little louder. Okay, I was driving down Main Street, and... Um, I had my headphones on, but um, I was answering the phone call. So the public safety man at the moment was at the stage. He pulled me over. He pulled me over, and he um, told me that he's going to write me a summons, which wasn't a problem. So he pulled me over and was writing me a summons. And while he was writing me OK. You can hear me now. <laughs> okay. So when he was pulling me over, he told me he's going to write me a summons. So I was like, OK. And as he's writing my summons, um, my brother happened to be walking past. And he's asking me, um, no, like, what happened? Why are you standing here? Because I was at the bus stop. So I was like, I, I just recently got pulled over. He's like, for what? And I, was, and I said, because I was on the phone. So in the midst of him asking me that, the um, public safety officer at the time came up to him and was like, this first, get the F out of here. So then I was like, that's my brother. He was just asking me what was going on. He was like, I don't care. And he was like, um, all, there's no reason for there to be a scene right now. So I was like, there's no, like my brother kind of got like offended. So he's like, I'm asking my little, my, my, my sister at the time, like what's going on? And he's like, he's like, um, get out of here or else I'm gonna arrest you. So he's like, what are you gonna arrest me for? So in the midst of that, he called back up, and in less than probably like two minutes, they came and they maced him and like threw him up against my car. Okay. And um, in the midst of that, I'm like screaming and stuff. They grabbed me by my by handcuffs and threw me in the back seat of the public safety car also. And then they took us both in and said it was disorderly conduct, resistant arrest, harassment. Yeah, like, oh yeah, they said we promoted a riot because they did it out and open in front of everybody. So they said we like made a big scene and I was pretty much it. They took me to um, center bookings for that. Mm. Wow. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming forward. I want to read a statement. Elaine Jackson uh, had an incident that she brought forth to this committee way back in 2010. Numerous of Ellen Pollavy was there at the time, Howard Pollavy was there. Uh, she had brought us something via email, which we didn't get because it was the wrong email. I have the exact statement that she sent me in 2010. This was, she then brought to us the fact that the children 
were still being harassed because the public safety officers who she had a lawsuit against were still working in her building every night. And so every night after this incident happened, she was faced with these, these public safety officers. So she came to the committee and said, why, if I have a lawsuit, are the officers still working in my building? That was a question she brought to the, some board members and the committee. We could only tell her that she needed to make sure she told her lawyer to document instances, et cetera. There was an incident on October 10th. She's sick. She's getting surgery, so she couldn't be here. So she wrote this out for me. Um, there was an incident on October 10th, 2010 with my twin sons in public safety. I did file a complaint with RIA. Erica Wilder explained to me that I had to give the complaint form to the person in charge of public safety. The two officers involved were Brian Rivera, badge 3978, and David Burnett. They were not the only safety officers involved, but they were the ones that started the fight. I just want to tell you that witnesses say that one of my sons, Joshua Strickland, was punched in the face, knocked to the floor by Brian Rivera, and when he got up to walk away, Rivera proceeded to punch him again, knocking him to the floor and told him he was under arrest. Joshua's brother, Joel Strickland, tried to pull Officer Rivera off his brother when the rest of public safety came out of the office and started to punch, kick, stomp, and even tried to throw Joshua into the public safety glass, office glass. The sergeant, the sergeant stood by witnessing all of this. The lieutenant and another public safety officer saw what was going on, came out of the office and said, what are you doing? They then proceeded to pull the officers off of Joshua and Joel. I was not there, but I will say that when I was called to come pick them up, they were beaten up so bad EMS had to be called to take them to the hospital. My children were not released to me because the sergeant told me that since they had a fight with the security guards, they were going to the 114th precinct and then Spofford. This incident happened around 9.30. Rivera and Burnett came to the hospital around 2.45 a.m. and told me that I had to meet them at the 114th precinct where my sons will be released to me. Oh, Joshua and Joel were handcuffed, handcuffed while retreating, receiving treatment from the pediatrician at Elmhurst Hospital. Public safety had to get their story together so they could try to find something to charge them with. When I met them at the 114th, the sergeant, a real police officer with the NYPD, asked my boys were they all right and said to Rivera and Burnett, did you beat these boys up like that? He shook his head and told them to take the handcuffs off. Take the handcuffs off and walk back to the, his office. This incident took place in front of public safety officer office in front of a lot of witnesses. I do want to tell you that public safety officer Rivera and Burnett are now so-called detectives. They walk around in plain clothes with badges hung around their neck. Is this needed here? I have some stories about this Rivera guy, and they are not good at all. He has been a problem ever since working here two years ago. The chief is aware of what's going on because there have been a lot of complaints against the night staff. Brian Rivera is the lead bully. Public safety keeps harassing the residents here in Eastwood, especially the young males. The stories that are surfacing about this night are unreal. Something has to be done. I'm really not able to talk too much about the case because I have to take it to trial. Uh, the boys do have an attorney. I asked, had she talked to Gara? No, I never met with Gara. I sent the complaint straight to Ria. Erica Wilder called me and told me she could not do anything for me until I met with Gara. She is the one that suggested that I try to reach out to you, Romano, and the Public Safety Department, the Public Safety Committee. I did not meet with Gara because he's full of himself and nothing you say is heard. One of the sergeants spoke to him on my behalf. The sergeant told him my sons were not bad kids that they did not have a criminal record with Public Safety Department or NYPD, but he didn't want to hear it. That was enough for me not to meet with him. Do you think that meeting with him would have really changed anything? I also ran into Michael Kellner at the train station and I spoke to him about my incident. He told me he was trying to get a civilian complaint review for Roosevelt Island Public Safety Department because my story was not the only problem in the Public Safety Department that he had heard about. He referred me to someone in his office, Robert Atterbury, to follow up on my complaint. I also went to Senator Serrano's office to speak to them about the incident. I will add that I was not alone, allowed to ride in the ambulance with them. They just turned 14. 14! They just turned 14. The public safety sergeant, department sergeant told me they were under arrest and I could not ride in the ambulance with them. I caught a taxi to Elmer's Hospital in Queens, arriving five minutes behind them with a witness to what happened. 14. 14. 14. Just, just, 14. just, just 14. The, there was a public, the, oh, uh, my children were handcuffed to the bed while the doctor examined them. There was a public safety department officer guarding them at the hospital. When the pediatrician finished examining them around 10 p.m., we waited on what I thought was NYPD, but at approximately 2.30 a.m., the two officers that assaulted my son came and wanted to to add that while, oh, and told me I had to go to the 114th precinct and my sons will be released. 
I just wanted to add that while we were waiting in the emergency room, my children hand, had handcuffs on their feet and their hands. These children were later not charged, right? They were, they didn't, what were they doing? Walking by. They were walking by, and I can tell you personally, my son was walking by public safety doing nothing on Roosevelt Island night, and the same thing happened to him. And he was thrown into the window and a glass broken. No charges. He was 15. I was never called. Never called. He was walking by. He had left my house. He was walking by. So I'm not surprised. And it's, it was the same officers, Rivera and this time Hernandez. We have Monica. Monica, can you come up and say something? Monica's son was recently the one who had his lung punctured and his ribs broken. Uh, she has to be careful what she says. She does have a lawsuit. I dropped my lawsuit because at the time I was being vetted for the REOC board and because I wanted to do something on this committee and I didn't have the courage possibly on that front to have my family exposed to all of the crap that you get. Personally, I've been put down by public safety. I know that they talk negative things to discourage people from believing, making me feel as I'm opinionated. I have an opinion because I've seen it over the years, time after time. Thank you, Monica. I, I'd is, like to say something. Can we get a written statement from the people that made it? Uh, okay. Uh, there's a new uh, blotter up on Facebook where we're getting accounts so that we get a timeline because we have lawyers that will take on all of these cases. It's called the Roosevelt Island Citizens Blotter Facebook. on Facebook. Thank you, Monica. Hi, good evening. Um, I can't talk too much about my case, but <laughs> I can't talk too much about my case, but I'm just going to say this. I've been here eight years, um, never had a problem here with anyone, with public safety, police. My kids are always active, doing things in the community, playing basketball. They go to the programs, going to school here. Um, I just, I'm, I'm just shocked that this has been going on for over 10 years. 20 years now, and nothing's been done. My son almost died. This, this, I was about to say something, but this should have been nipped in the bud a long time ago, and this wouldn't have happened to my son. My son wouldn't have been in the hospital, but puncture lung, broken ribs, fractured tooth, had this been nipped in the bud a long time ago. This, if he would have died, it would have been blood on public safety's hands and the committee's hands, because they didn't do anything. Thank you. Adib, did you want to speak? Hello, everyone. You guys know probably the story. In 2009, May 30th, um, public safety was called in to kick the uh, minor league baseball off of the field because their time was up. Um, the time was up because the field was not ready, and it took them an hour to prepare it. Um, and so public safety came in and immediately started um, pushing the kids off of the field. Uh, parents were objecting, the kids were objecting. I have pictures. Um, in my nature, I'm a journalist, I'm a photographer, so I have all of this documented. In the process of taking the pictures, one of the officers, or two of the officers, came to me, straight to me. I was one foot away from the line that that uh, marks the field. Um, they came to me, pointing it out to me to get out. I said, I'm taking out, but let me take this last picture. Um, the officer, Wilson Toro, um, took the handcuffs and he said, if you don't leave, I'm gonna handcuff you and take you. Um, I said, look, I'm taking pictures. He turned me around, handcuffed me, and walked me off. Um, in the process, kids and parents were saying he didn't do anything. And I was followed by the crowd. Um, and the more the crowd was after me, the more the officer was getting upset. He um, took me in, handcuffed me to uh, the wall in the, pre in, the, uh, in the old public safety next to the youth center. Um, I told him, look, I'm diabetic. I haven't had my lunch. This is now an hour past. I feel weak. Could I please have something to drink or eat? I'll pay for it. He whispered in my ear and he said, um, I'm gonna let you faint, I will call an ambulance, and then I'm gonna take your ass to jail. I didn't respond because I, I took that he was trying to get me to um, be, upset. be upset. 
I waited for him to step a few um, feet away, and I said the same thing this time louder. Um, one of the officers actually brought me um, soda, and I was very weak. I actually collapsed on the collapsed on the bench. In the meantime, I took my cell phone and I called my wife because she was off the island. My son was then was left by himself. NYPD would never leave a minor not attended while they're doing an arrest. Um, I asked the officer to go and take care of my son. He said, that's your fault, it's on you. <coughs> I didn't react. I, I had people were coming in and they were screaming to let me go. Eventually they let me out. Um, my son up until now is distraught about this. He's afraid of public safety. There's not one day he leaves the house without me saying, stay away from public safety. It has become a habit that he leaves the house and he says, I know, don't get close to public safety. That's outrageous that we're on an island where we're telling our kids to be careful of public safety. We're here to protect. My, my daughter was also arrested for trespassing because she was taking pictures for um, a high school project. They didn't give her any warning. All of a sudden, she's in the car handcuffed. And um, I also tell her, be careful of public safety. And I think it is time now to make a change. Um, my charges were dropped. And actually the judge, I went with my lawyer, and the judge um, said out loud in the court, not another Roosevelt Island case. Mm. Dismissed. Didn't even want to hear the case. Dismissed. And the, the charges were dropped. Thank you. Thank you. And I also, I want to mention, I have a neighbor who also, who lives down my hall. He's a pacifist. He's a journalist as well. He was taking pictures. He was assaulted by public safety. I heard a story from Iskowitz. He had a dentist visiting him here. He was assaulted because he made a U-turn not knowing what the situation was. How about the cab driver that got maced? When I brought it up to Dr. Director Gary, he told me, well, he ended up pleading guilty and he didn't do anything. How many of us or people would plead guilty to a lesser charge to get it out of the court system so that you're not faced with a $10,000 bill? Amen. So that you're not faced with having to go back to court, miss work, and your child to miss school? I mean, pleading down to a lesser offense to get out because they tell you you can go home? How many wouldn't do that? Do you want to speak, Neil? Hello. I'm the father of Jenna. Um, I just wanted to just to also state that uh, it, when I was uh, uh, mugged, I feel like I, I was mugged by these officers because they were behind me. Um, mind you, there was four of them. When I was thrown to the floor, uh, I was pulled one way and then another way. And they called that resisting arrest. Because as one officer was pulling me this way, the other one pulled me back, they said no. It, this is their mentality. They don't know, you know, it was like the Three Stooges. Um, when I was thrown to the floor, I had a welt the size of a, a half dollar on my head. I was kneed in the back, choked, and then, and then handcuffed. When I called for an ambulance, uh, Guerrero, the chief, s said in a statement that I had uh, made, up, made up these injuries. Uh, also, the, the officer, that, the sergeant that pulled over my daughter, we found out later on, and it was in, it was in the, uh, the wire, she was suspended 11 times. 11 times. Three times, Three times without pay. Now, how do you keep a person like that on, on payroll, on the island here? Now, as, as a part-time worker, uh, I worked for the city of New York for the last 24 years. I drove the minibus for eight years here, and uh, when I got out of when I got out of court the next day, I was approached by a supervisor. Now he didn't know if I pleaded guilty or not guilty. Enough. He just approached me and said, 
Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Riox let you go. I said, for what? Well, if you don't resign, they're going to let you go. So it's either, you know, uh, jump belts will push you. What? Now, they had it all, now, and this is, this is, and you can check this, you can check this with Riox. They have, um, they have, they had a bus driver that had a fight on the bus, an actual fight on the bus with uh, a neighbor of mine who used to live in Monica's apartment. Uh, they then later uh, dropped the charges, but took this bus driver off of being a bus driver and put him on grounds crew. So in reality, they gave this bus driver a raise because grounds crew gets more money than bus drivers and he still works there today. What happened with me, it wasn't on, on I, was, I was off duty and they let me go. So, I'm just, I mean, there's, there's so much more to it. And Guerrero's original story, it changed how many times? At least three. At least three different times because things just didn't add it up. And he figured, oh, well, you know what? Oh, wait, he's right. Let me change it to this. And he kept, kept on changing it and changing it and changing it. What is and the REAC board of directors doing about this? Nothing. Nothing? They, they won't respond. And the thing is, you know what? People, and when I, and, and this is another thing. When people used to get on the bus, I used to get a lot of people visiting Roosevelt Island. And uh, they would ask me as a bus driver, oh, I was looking to get an apartment over here. How is the crime? And I would tell them, it's beautiful over here. I was married in the same building right here, 1986. I was married right up there. And I've been here a long time. And I tell them, come here if you've got a family, bring them here. It's the greatest place for family. But watch out for public safety. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to mention another issue was, like, for instance, Gara is aware of this stuff. Our problem is that it, our, our suggestions, um, our requests, when we bring things from our committee, when residents bring us complaints and we then speak to Greer and we try to work it out and try to figure a way to make it better, it falls on deaf ears. Rivera was promoted. We brought to him four cases where Rivera, the same one who beat this child, the same one who had harassed two others, was involved in several different incidences which were over the top. He promoted him. He told me, oh no, no, he's a proactive officer and he promoted him to detective. When I looked at the records and I saw, and I know that some of the arrests were not legitimate, but that's how he handled the complaints that we brought him from residents by promoting the officer. Yes, Monica. They referenced to Neil's medical injuries. The same thing they did with my son. They did the same thing to my son. They changed his, um, his medical, uh, they said his injuries were false. He had pneumonia. I have the papers here. This is his discharge paper. He had a hemothoracic non-display rib fracture. He lost over 200 cc's of blood, and that was in one day. He was there for seven days. I have the papers here. The truth is going to be told, they're liars. They try to say my son had pneumonia, they saved his life, but they nearly killed him. And then they tried to cover it up. My son told me he could not speak in the emergency room. They spoke for him. Ye spoke for him. He spoke to the doctors, not my son. So they lied on my son. They all lied. They all lied and changed this up. My son said, Mom, they were standing in front of my door and they kept telling, they kept saying, no, write this, don't write that, write this, don't write that. And that was amongst the public safety guys. Don't write this, write that. And that's how they do it. They cover up for each other. I went to Hernandez. I said, well, who's the arresting officer? What's his name and badge? He gave me a totally different name, totally different badge. When I asked my son who was the arresting officer, he said, Mom, he was in the room with me. I was handcuffed to the bed. He was in the room with me. Meanwhile, he's getting surgery in the same room, handcuffed to the bed.
I was here back in 2008, and since 2008, between both of my boys, they were arrested about 20 times. Not one time that they were arrested that they have been charged with a crime. They have been arrested for trespassing in our building. Um, and it's just constant harassment with both of my kids, uh, especially my youngest son, because they say he has a smart mouth, because, yeah, he does have a smart mouth. But because he just, you know, he when public safety comes to approach him, let, let me talk about his last arrest. They came from the school from playing basketball. Half the kids went into the store, half the kids stayed outside of the deli. When uh, my son saw the public safety pull up, he automatically knew that they were coming to harass them because they were standing in front of the store. My son turned around, went into the store. The other kids that was standing in front of the store with him went another way. You see on the, on the tape, in the store, my son goes into the goes to the back aisle, get a juice, comes back, and here come the public safety rushing him, getting him, slamming him on the floor. Then you see the uh, deli people come along and ask in public safety, what's the problem? What did he do wrong? They arrested the deli people as well. There was a, also another kid there that was trying to take pictures or whatever. They arrested him too. Public safety is out of hand. They almost killed my friend's son. And we need to stay focused. It's been going on too long under Guerra, whatever his name is. He, um, he rewards his officers for the most aggressive officers. He rewards them. And he keeps them on staff. The guy that nearly killed her son works every day. Although it's supposed to be investigated, he's still getting a paycheck. They don't even put him on desk duty. This man is still walking around getting a paycheck. That goes to show us that Yara does not respect us as residents. You understand? He, it's, it's just a blatant disrespect. Him and uh, Renee. We need to, if we can't get uh, the police department here, what we need to do is fire from the top down. Yara, Renee, the public safety officers that have a lot of different incident, um, incidents, Hernandez definitely. They need to fire those board members. The same people that want reappointment, they need to get rid of all those board members because ain't none of them doing nothing. Okay. Um, and that's basically it. And, and rehire new people and get new training. And that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn, you wanted um, to add something? When, um, when my son was assaulted in 2008, uh, one of the problems that we had it was trying to, we knew of a lot of cases and we did some investigating, we found a lot of isolated incidents and other incidents that weren't so isolated, but it was very hard to get people to come together. I'm extremely encouraged by the fact that unfortunately because of the viciousness that was directed against your son, that at least now people are speaking out and that we can now begin to unite as a community to put an end to this abuse. That is what is posed right now. We can, there are, this is just the tip of the iceberg, what you have heard today. Many people have experiences that we are gonna to start to gather and when we have it all down on the blog and in the press and everything like that, you people are going to be amazed that this has gone on for so long without being checked. But we're here to say now that this is now going to start being checked. That this community is starting to organize and to protest publicly. And we are going to create the pressure that will force the authorities to do the right thing. Because it's obvious that up until this point, they will not do the right thing unless they are pressured. Thank you. All right, Lynn. Uh, we want to, we, I don't want to stop anyone, but we do want to have a vote. We have two letters that the Public Safety Committee has written, one to Serrano, one to Como, asking specifically for various things. You've all gotten them. We also want a resolution to be passed that we do want to hold a demonstration on 116. 
four to end the abuse. 216 to end the abuse, and we also have another resolution that all members have gotten that this will have to be voted on. So, go ahead, um, Linda. A neighbor who wants to remain anonymous came to me. Um, she's a parent. She had four children. Um, there was a problem at the tram. The tram station uh, metro card was not working. She told her children to go under the, the tram. Uh, Turnstile. Turnstile. And um, she was then arrested for trying to fair beat. Um, I, she had an infant in a stroller at the time, and they had to have a friend watch this child while she was arrested down in public safety. Um, but she has not wanted to come forward because she was so embarrassed by the incident. Mm. And afraid. People are afraid. The community is small, and the problem is people are afraid. You get harassed. I got harassed. My son, I worry every day when he goes outside. I tell my son the same thing. Do you have your ID? What are you doing? Where are you going? I call him. He's 20 years old. I call him all the time. He miss me home by 12 o'clock. Or I'm petrified. Where are you? I'm at a friend's house. Are you sure you're inside? Yes. Thank you. I just want to say one thing in uh, Makiva's uh, story here, um, because it involved the, the M&D deli, and the, the, the owner says he's been here 31 years, he just wants a nice, you know, quiet neighborhood, he doesn't want to escalate things. However, there's video, and I spoke to three different employees, three separate times, all got the almost identical story, because in their mind they're all watching the video of what happened. But the boy uh, who got uh, handcuffed in the back of the store, after he's on the floor and handcuffed, they still beat him afterwards, okay? Another uh, boy who, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm working on getting it. Uh, Riak has the film, by the way. Um, another boy came in and one of the employees tried stopping him and preventing him from going into the back aisle because he knew there was stuff going down there, didn't want him to come in. Public safety arrested the employee, and then when his brother behind the counter said, why are you arresting my brother? Because he was there trying to protect public safety. They arrested him, and he's on the floor now, uh, handcuffed. So their case is pending, but I'm just pointing out that this is way over the top kind of stuff. Thank you. The problem is it is over the top. We continually see excessive force. It's excessive force. If you, yes, you have a right to arrest in trespassing, but because somebody is trespassing or is in a building, can't we say, need to move on? Officer <coughs> Paris says, you need to move on. Don't do it here. It's not the time. He has a rapport with our residents, with the kids. Do we really have to arrest for everything? Do we then have to beat them once they're arrested? No, you can arrest. You shouldn't have to. You don't have to arrest. You're still processed, right? Aaron, let's take this vote. Okay. They have that right. Okay. The officer has, within his discretion, an officer has, and, and bear in mind, I don't like speaking for the police department because the best person to speak about police procedure is the police department. The best person to speak about public safety procedure is public safety. I don't know public safety procedure, okay? I, I only know police procedure. But a police officer has it within his discretion to do three things with a trespass arrest. He can actually process the person and charge them with a, with a misdemeanor. He can take the person and properly ID them and give them a summons or he can give them a warning. A police officer has those three options, okay? And he, do, he doesn't have the right to use deadly force at that point. They have the right to beat him up. Okay, uh, obviously, I am not gonna stand here and say, yes, the public aid safety has the right to use deadly force. Of course they don't. Right, let me just say, let me just say two, let me say two more things okay. about you as a resident on Roosevelt Island. You have the right to, go, to come to my office and file a criminal complaint 
and bring your issue to the appropriate unit within the district attorney's office. That has not happened in any of these cases. Net, and, and, and that saying it in a public meeting, I'm not going to take a public, a private statement in a public meeting. I'm going to hear your complaints and take those back to my office, but I'm not going to take that. You would have to sit down with an investigator, with an assistant district attorney, and give your factual account of what happened, and that person would assign someone to look into it. That has not happened with any of these incidences. It, may I finish, please? Instead, you've chosen to address the issue through going through a civil, a civil court proceeding or hiring a, an attorney to pursue this civilly, which is fine. That's, that's your option. You can pursue it civilly. And, and I applaud you because it should be pursued with REAC and with the, with the state who's paying public safety to police. They're called public safety. They're supposed to ensure the safety of the residents of this island. And I think that the, the Riyadh, and I, I know there are reporters in the room, so I'm sure I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble. But you <laughs> holding Riyadh accountable, I think whether or not you came to the district attorney's office or whether or not you pursue it civilly, Riyadh should still be held accountable for their employees. If I go into the public and, and I do something to injure or harm someone, the district attorney's office is gonna be, is gonna be totally held accountable for my actions. No. So, not with these board members, they not. It is okay, so I, 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 this meeting is taking is. a very long time, so I'm, we're going to be invited back to talk more extensively about trespassing. So I'll just say those couple of things and thank you. Never see you. Thank board. you so much, Linda. We appreciate uh, we appreciate that, and a lot of the problem is we do not know where we can go because we don't have a CCRB. We hope we will get this one through Ke uh, Michael, Mick Mike and Kellner's office, but we don't know what our rights are. We are told you need to go and give your report to REAC. You have to go to public safety and make your complaint there, hope that it then goes to REAC. Then you meet with Director Guerra. I mean, it's, it's a very scary process, and then it's a small community. So who knows what happens after that. Okay, we do need to take a vote. So does somebody, other people have things, new instances that they want to talk about so that people get a general idea of the pattern of abuse because that's what we're asking you to look at. We're asking you to look at the pattern of abuse. Hi, my name is Ilanka Salisbury. I live in Manhattan Park. I've been here 12 years. I appreciate and deeply feel shaken by everything you have shared. And, and I thank you for sharing the stories, but I really feel you're preaching to the choir. None of us here on this council are against you. We're for you. And, and I don't want to say that you don't have, should not have a forum to speak, but I've reached a point where I would like to actually do something. So I believe now we should really make a vote on what you would discuss. Thank you for sharing. I'm, I'm deeply saddened. I, I walk this island all the time. I can't imagine someone pushing me around. No, you know, I, I, you're we have to come to a point where we need to go into action. Action. I, I really think we, the stories need, we're, we're done. We're done with the stories. They exist. They're heart-wrenching. I am grieved for your, you and your son. Grieved. I lived here. I'm happy. I share that. I sit here rather naive all of a sudden hearing this. So, Aaron, please, let's move into action. Saturday, February 16th. Very quickly, because we need to take the vote. It's 10 I just wanted to Come say that um, I, I coach soccer, and two kids were fighting amongst each other, 10 and 11 years old. Public safety was called. They came in. They put them down on the stairs. They were crying. They're nearly peeing in their pants. They were shaking. There was five public safety officers o over them yelling at them for fighting or for whatever it is. 11 years old. All, there's no age discrimination. There's an older man who's 70 years old who was an ex um, firefighter, he told me he was put on the ground and handcuffed because he was asking public safety, why are you arresting this whatever incident that was? Okay, thank you, Adeem. So, so here's what we're going to do. Erin is going to read the resolution and... We have two, public safety committee is asking for rear's 
asking for Rera to endorse. The Public Safety Committee wants to do a demonstration. One, we want to do a demonstration on 216 in order to bring awareness of the community of this terrible incident that has happened and the pattern of abuse that has been happening uh, for many years. So, the first resolution that I'm going to bring is that I would like Public Safety Committee forwards to the Rear Common Council a request that the Rear Common Council endorse, sponsor, and promote a peaceful demonstration scheduled for February 16th, 2013 to be held in Good Shepherd Plaza to address public safety concerns. That is our first resolution. We would like the Common Council to support this so that we can say that this is a Rear Common Council demonstration. Do we have a second? Doesn't, doesn't require a second. It comes from... Okay, we got it anyway. Right. Okay, so uh, any discussion? Yes. <laughs> That's why we had them speak. <laughs> yeah, let's just take okay. some action. Let's just take a vote. Any, Some, somebody want to call the question? How about any objection to unanimous consent? Any approach? objections? Right. Any objection to unanimous consent? Okay. Good. I'd okay. Like Thank you. We appreciate that. It's Saturday. Fed well. Don't wait. Fe they have to give us. We need the permit, which I see the board is here. We have put in the things. It is now under Rira, so hopefully there should be no problem with getting the permit. I know that the Easter egg hunt got their permit, so hopefully we will get our permit too. One hunt or another. Okay. The permit is for the outside. For outside. Oh, outside. This is, yes. It's or if it rains, it'll be in here. Right. right. Okay, our second resolution. What time? What time? It's going to be from 12 to 2 o'clock. There'll be an open mic. People we invite to come and tell their stories. We will have counsel there. I will have somebody from the, the Lawyers Guild that's going to be monitoring it so that it's legal. Yes, the Lawyers Guild. Okay, it's going to be outside the church? Yes. It is. It's across the street. No, no, it's... it's, it's can I, can, I just, can I just say something about Okay. I was looking, in terms of permitting this, we're trying to get a space that's familiar to REOC, okay? And also, in the past, uh, RERA has had demonstrations over here. So I was looking for something that we could at least point to had been done in the past and with the same kind of venue and the same kind of circumstances. And so it's sort of a repeat, if you remember back in the late 90s, uh, with the tram being out or something like that, it's the same kind of thing. It's over here, and, and if there's inclement weather, it'll be inside right here. They will. They, how are they going to work right across the street? What's the second resolution? Okay, the second resolution. This resolution is, whereas the residents of Roosevelt Island feel that public safety department uses excessive force, Whereas the residents disagree with the maximum enforcement and zero tolerance policies used under Director Guerra and his leadership. Whereas the residents feel that a hostile, abusive, and intimidating atmosphere is created by the Public Safety Department as directed by this leadership. Whereas Rira Public Safety Committee has expressed these concerns and made suggestions for reform for many years. Whereas there has been virtually no improvement in public safety's behavior or its relationship to the community. Whereas Director Guerra does not objectively review or investigate the claims made against his officers. Whereas the situation has been worsening significantly in the past years. Therefore, RERA requests REOC terminate the services of Director Guerra, Deputy Director Bryan, Lieutenant Yee and other top public safety department leadership as REOC may deem necessary. Okay. Okay. Now, because there's so many extra audience people here, we're going to do a roll call vote. So would you call the roll, please, Secretary? Layla Amatula? Joanna Armstrong? Yes. Helen Chalivas? Yes. Michael Churchill? Yes. Jeffrey Escobar? Yes. David Evans? Yes. Frank Ferrans? Yes. Aaron Feely Nahum? Yes. Russell Fields? Yes. Dolores Green? Yes. 
Aaron Hamburger, Stephen Heller, Mark Lyon, Julina Paler, I'm sorry, Julie Palermo, yes. Jeff Procopa, yes. Sharon Pope, yes. Romano Reed, yes. Mickey Rindler, yes. Ethel Rom, yes. Alaka Salisbury, yes. Lynn Chinazaki, yes. Elizabeth Stapen, yes. Joseph Strong, yes. Nicole, um, Lorraine Williams. Out, Madam Secretary, Madam President, have we heard uh, Mr. Vice President? I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Okay. Motion passes. Terrific. Thank you so much. What was the vote? 25. Everyone voted this year and said yes. Motion passes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Okay. That's terrific. Thank you so much. We have two other things. We are requesting. We are writing a letter and we want to put it on rear stationary. The Public Safety Department uh, Committee put a lot of effort uh, into this letter. This is. We have one letter going to uh, Senator Serrano and one letter that is going to be going to the governor. Doing exactly. As you mentioned, everybody has had a chance to read these letters so that you know basically what they say. Does everyone support that we bring these, that we are allowed to put these letters on rear stationary? Yes. 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 Do I need to read? Do I need to read the letter? Okay, I'm going to read the letter. Yeah, could I? I'm not can I make a suggestion to save really time? Late. I don't know if everybody got a chance to read it. I, I just want to make a suggestion to save yeah. some time. Because these are two letters and possibly imply two motions, can we do it as a single motion? So could you read both letters since they're almost the same? They're, they're almost the same, but they differ on what the capacity of the person, the government official does. For instance, the governor, I ask for things that are specifically related to the governor in, and his office. For Officer Serrano, I ask for support and suggestions and, you know, assistance. Can you just read the letters so that we have it on record? Okay, right. do, you have, uh, do you have a copy of the governor? We'll discuss, I, uh, I have Serrano. Okay. Dear, Honor, uh, dear Senator Serrano, as members of the Public Island, as, a, as members of the Roosevelt Island Residents Association Public Safety Committee, it is our responsibility to explore reports and patterns of law enforcement misconduct when brought to our attention by residents of our community. We consider this the most important aspect of the committee's mission. Anyone who has lived on this island for an extended period of time is aware of the variety of resident accounts of arrogant and unacceptable behavior on the part of various officers under the command of Director of Public Safety, Chief Guerra, uh, Keith Guerra, and his predecessors. These repeated occurrences represent a pattern of a culture of abuse and incompetence that is completely intolerable and even illegal. Teenagers, dentists, pacifist journalists, and parents at Little League games have witnessed this misconduct. What hasn't been witnessed is an apology to the community from anyone official, a reprimand to the officers in question, or the acknowledgement by Director Guerra that mis this misconduct has occurred. Our patience is worn thin. Our meeting with Director Guerra, our letters to the Roosevelt Island Operating Cor Corporation, requesting specific incidences be investigated and that Rear be kept apprised of the progress, have failed to result in any concrete changes. Although provided an audience with Director Guerra on occasion, no changes have occurred in his philosophy of zero tolerance regarding grounds for arrest or in the excessive force used by his peace officers. This lack of change confirms our belief that resident concerns are not falling on deaf ears, but that the Director of Public Safety is fully aware of these events and maliciously encourages these activities. The brutality and excessive force documented by many residents over the years continues despite our protests. In the most recent incident, a 20-year-old man, Anthony Jones, was hospitalized for a week with injuries sustained during his arrest. Treated like a criminal, handcuffed to a bed for five days, he was released, emotionally and physically damaged, with no criminal charges filed against him. This incident reinforces the many other complaints we receive from residents concerning the way they are treated by public safety officers on Roosevelt Island. 
Reviews of the majority of arrests made by public safety officers show that they are for quality of life issues, minor infractions, resulting in summonses or dropped altogether once heard in court. In the majority of cases, during the questioning or arrest processes, individuals are treated harshly, intimidated, bullied, humiliated, and subjected to excessive force. Often their constitutional rights are treated with indifference. We believe that a public airing of we believe that only a public airing of grievances and increased community control can overcome the isolation and intimidation individuals feel in pursuing accountability and a change in law officers' behavior. Only an independent civilian complaint review board for Roosevelt Island in New York.